Hi there, my name is Julie Faithfan Balzer, and today I'm going to show you how to make a super cute pair of paper bead earrings. I'm going to choose pattern and then saved data, go to my USB, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the file that says paper beads. Now you can download this file from the Scan and Cut website for yourself. I'm going to hit OK. There it is. I'm going to scan in my paper to make sure that I'm going to place these beads exactly where I want them. So there it is, and I can see that my paper beads look fine. If I'm at all nervous, I can, of course, nudge them over, keep them exactly where I want them, or if I want to pick a very certain part of the pattern that I want. But if it all looks okay, I'm simply going to hit OK. So I'm going to choose Cut and I'm going to choose start and we're just going to go ahead and cut out those pieces of paper. Once it's cut, I'm going to go ahead and unload the mat. I'm going to close the dust cover. I'm going to peel away the excess paper. Here, I know you don't believe it, but these two strips are going to become some fabulous paper beads. I just need to take them over to my desk and get to work. So I have my paper strips and what I'm going to do is I just have a really thin pencil here and starting at the top end, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just use the pencil to roll the paper right around there. Now I am going to glue as I go. So you just want a wet adhesive and I happen to like one that's in a small applicator bottle, but if you glue as you go, it makes your bead a little more solid. Now you could use a knitting needle as the inside. You could use a toothpick if you wanted a really small hole. I don't mind having a larger bead, so that's why I'm using a, a pencil, which is a little bit larger. So again, you can see how I'm just continuing to glue as I go. And you don't need a ton of glue. You just need enough to really keep it. And you want to keep it nice and tight. So if you find that it's not tight, go ahead and unroll it and re-roll it because you should have a nice tight bead. So I'm just going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling and gluing and rolling and rolling and gluing and doing all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some more adhesive here. Now when I get to the fork, the fork in the road, I'm actually, I have found it easier if I just do one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, that's how I get a tighter roll. Is I'm just going to grab the first one and continue to roll it and roll it and roll it. And this is what gives the bead its nice unique shape is these two little forks as opposed to just a regular cylinder. It gives it a kind of cool wavy shape. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to go ahead, you guessed it, I'm going to go ahead and glue it. So I'm going to glue it and then I'm going to return to the first one, which still needs to go on. And I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive and then I'm going to roll it and pull it and roll it and tighten it and do all those things so that it also forms a really nice little cylinder. And again, when I get to the end, I'm going to go ahead, add some glue and pop it on there. Now, once this is dry, and that's really important, this has to be dry to do the next step or it will start to unroll. And I know this from experience. So make sure that you let this sit for a few minutes and let it dry, okay? So once it's dry, and I have one here that is already dry, so we're gonna go ahead and pop that on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it, I just have a container here so that I can balance this a little bit more easily. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take some clear nail polish you could also use varnish or anything else like that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a nice clear coat on there. Now, this is not going to keep this from, you could not dump this now into like a pool of water, but it means that like if you're wearing these earrings and it rains or your hair is wet or something, it's going to be totally and completely fine. So I'm just dabbing on my nail polish onto there. I do try to get the ends as well. And if you want, you can actually take it off the pencil. My fingers are going to be sticky with nail polish now, but you can just drop some down on the ends like this to make sure that everything gets nice and coated. There you go. And that will just keep everything solid. So again, you're going to let that dry completely before you get to the next step. Luckily, I happen to have one here which is already hardened and lovely and you can see how fabulously shiny it is. Okay, so now I'm ready to get a little bit fancy. So I'm going to take some puffy paint and puffy paint is just a dimensional, you know, paint and you can find it in any craft store and I'm going to add some little 
dots or spikes really are is what they're going to be. So I'm just going to squeeze and there you go. Spike and spike and another spike. And this is one of those things that I think takes a paper bead to the next level. Now you could make a fabulous necklace. And of course the benefit of using the scan and cut to cut all your paper beads is instead of having to measure out each of those strips and cut them, you just get to do the fun part, the fun part of the constructing and the decorating. I can imagine doing this for a kid's birthday party or even for a bachelorette party, a bunch of crafty ladies getting together and having fun making themselves some jewelry. So that is actually going to dry dimensionally. How cool is that? So I'm just going to leave it here on top of my container to let it dry. But luckily, I happen to have one which is already dry. Okay, so this is already dry. It looks really cool. And now I'm ready to construct it into an earring. So let me go ahead and grab my parts that I'm going to use so that I can make my earring. Okay, so let me look, tell you exactly what I have here so you can see it. So I have two round saucer beads. Okay, I have one little rectangle bead. I have one little sort of pretty uh, diamondy shaped bead. Then I have an eye pin, which is a straight piece with a loop at the bottom and I have a head pin which is a straight piece with a little head at the bottom and I also have an earring hook okay so we're gonna make our fabulous earring here so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my eye pin and I'm going to slip this white saucery bead on. Now this bead is has a hole that will fit on here that's very important and is as a bead it's wide enough that it's going to catch this bead so it won't slip off the head pin. Can you see that? That's actually a functional issue. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slip on the matching bead to the other side. Oops! I'm going to slip it on like I said. There you go. And then I'm going to add my little bit of sparkly diamondy bling right on the top there to it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the loop so that I can attach the earring hook to here. Now this is really easy to do. A lot of wire work is easier than people think. People think it's hard, but it's actually quite easy. I'm going to take a pair of flat nose pliers and flat nose pliers are just pliers that are flat inside. Get it? Flat nose because they're flat inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and bend this as best as I can right against the top of that bead, okay? So I have like what I would consider almost a 90 degree angle, just a little shy. Then I'm going to take some round nose pliers, and I bet you can guess why they're called round nose, because they have a round nose as opposed to a flat nose. They didn't name these complicated names, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab it, and I'm going to pull the wire towards myself to create a loop, okay? And once I can go no further, I'm going to pull it out, just like that and I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the pliers and continue to wrap it around. Okay, so now I have some excess wire so I'm going to get something that they call, you guessed it, wire snips, flush cutters and all of those ideas indicate to you right that this is going to cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just get in there and cut as close as I can to the loop and then you should be able to see right here that beautiful loop. So I have an earring hook which already has a loop. I'm going to slide it in there and then I'm going to use my flat nose pliers just to tighten up that little loop. And I like to go past one, past second and past a third time and that makes it nice and tight. But wait, we're not done. We got to take it to one step more. Totally fabulous. Remember, we put an eye pin at the bottom, which has a loop, which means we want to hang something off it. So I've got one bead left. I've got my head pin. I'm just going to place the bead right onto my head pin. And you can see how the head keeps the bead on there. Okay. And then we're going to do the exact same process that we did before. I'm going to bend this as close to the bead as I can. Okay. At almost a 90 degree angle. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to pull the wire towards me and wrap it towards myself. Okay. When it's almost wrapped all the way, just like that, I'm going to remove the pliers, reinsert them so that I can get that nice full loop. I'm going to take my flush cutters. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it as close as possible to the loop so that it's a nice tight loop. Okay, I'm going to slip this eye right onto the loop that I created. If I can, let's see, it's turning on me. I've made such a tight loop, I actually need to loosen it up. So that's easy enough to do. I'm just going to push it away from myself. You can see that it's been loosened up. I'm going to go ahead, slide it on. 
And there we go. We're going to tighten it up. And remember what I said about one, two, three. I'm going to bring it towards myself, away from myself, towards myself again. And that tightens that up perfectly. And now I have an absolutely fabulous, gorgeous paper bead earring. And I have another one because here's the set. I can't wait to wear these out. I think they're totally fabulous. Take a peek and tell me, do they look like me? I think they're kind of great. I hope you'll make a pair of your own. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. And don't forget to visit the Scan and Cut website as well at scanandcut.com.